So thank you, Philip. Now we will go uh, into a sh uh, question and answer session. So as I understood from Alexander, we have some questions from the audience. Which I will now, uh, which we will show you now, and then uh, the speakers uh, of today will answer them. So our first question is that um, interdisciplinarity and integration are formidable challenges. Uh, in addition to trained individual professionals, uh, don't these challenges imply the involvement of major companies? Can smaller companies, uh, SMEs, 95% uh, uh, in the European construction markets, provide such solutions? So, general question, um, who to answer? Uh, Peter, would you like to comment on this or start? Uh, yes, uh, I would like to uh, comment uh, on this. Um, if it comes to uh, innovation, I think that um, uh, the main innovations that we need and we can expect in the European construction sector uh, will, uh, will be initiated by SMEs rather than uh, large companies. And this has to do with the fact that if, if you look to the transition uh, that is needed in the European construction sector is that uh, many of the, the, the larger building companies uh, don't have at this moment uh, particular interest in it uh, and rather stick to business as usual while SMEs um, are more willing to uh, to do innovations. I see that in one of my other projects, the More Connect project, uh, in which we work with SMEs and for example there they come to, uh, with new solutions like 3D printing, uh, etc. Um, nevertheless, uh, having said that, I think that uh, especially training also to these SMEs is uh, very important. Uh, at the same time, you see some, uh, some constraints like uh, simple issues like uh, there's not enough time for uh, these kind of professionals to get training. So this is uh, a little bit the situation how I see it at this moment. Thank you. Peter, um, so are we, I go to the second question uh, on the same subject. Is commissioning a possible solution? Can commissioning be considered a skill? Uh, maybe I just start with a short comment and then I hand over to, to the other speakers. Uh, uh, commissioning is a possible solution on, uh, yes, on, on um, uh, let's say, uh, achieving and uh, operating buildings, yes, so uh, uh, for certainly a solution for, for uh, ensuring also the quality of, of building uh, services and operation. Uh, and I, in my presentation you had a brief overview at the last slide also about uh, other, other initiatives ongoing on, on commissioning, uh, how, to, how to make it, but indeed continuous commissioning is one thing uh, we, we tackle. Now, whether it can be considered as a skill, uh, well, we, we, we have uh, the commissioning phase, uh, like uh, even continuous commissioning in mind when, when we define the, the actual technologies that we are dealing with. So uh, it's not a skill uh, like, uh, yeah, so, uh, the, yeah, uh, um, professionals has to be, uh, of course, knowledgeable and, um, uh, on, on, yeah, on the commissioning as well. So if, yeah, maybe Peter, if you want to add anything. Um, yes, uh, considering uh, commissioning, I think this is uh, one of the key elements to, uh, to, to face the challenge of the energy performance gap or the performance gap uh, in general. It's not only energy, it's also on, uh, for example, a well-being, uh, environmental quality. And definitely, I think that uh, commissioning should be considered as a skill. Um, if, if, if I look to our uh, repository in Poftrek, we have uh, lectures also uh, addressing uh, commissioning uh, principles. So definitely it's something that uh, needs to be addressed and is also uh, an important uh, part of uh, training and upskilling. Mm -hmm. And this um, brings me uh, a little bit to the third question, is BIM a skill in itself? Um, one of the interesting things uh, of BIM is that you can use 
BIM as a kind of an information carrier for, um, for quality. So, in fact, uh, of, of course, BIM is a skill in itself, but you can also use it as an information carrier to define what quality levels uh, do you need, what kind of professions do you uh, need are involved in this to achieve this quality, and what kind of trainings do you uh, need to achieve that quality. And this is something that we, uh, that's, uh, for example, addressed in the BIMplement project. So, uh, there you see the link between trainings, upskilling, and the, and the challenges uh, and possibilities that uh, BIM offer. Yes, thank you. So I think we can go uh, to the next question. So are there missing cross-cutting skills that could be brought in by alternate professionals? For example, certain skills usually required from an architect to be contributed by a mechanical engineer in the same team. Yes, maybe I can, uh, can I answer that maybe, uh, yes, Anita? Because sure. um, it's an interesting question and it's true that uh, I think with the energy challenge that we have and the, the higher quality that we need to be building at to get to high energy performance buildings, the, the different actors in the, in the construction industry need to be working more closely together. So, uh, for example, with the BIM uh, information sharing, so I, I think that the, the different actors, uh, to some extent, do start sharing some of each other's skills. So the architect needs to have a, a better idea of mechan mechanical engineering than, than, than maybe they, they needed 10 or 20 years ago. And likewise, uh, the mechanical engineer or the, uh, the electrician or the installer on site needs to have an appreciation of what the other people are doing on site at the same time and not just their own uh, their own task. The, the, it's this cross-disciplinary coordination that is um, kind of difficult because it's not common in the construction industry, but it needs to be uh, happening more now. May I add uh, something to that? Um, I think it's not only uh, cross-trade uh, between the different professions, but it's also cross-level. So I think it's very important that um, for example, a designer, an engineer, uh, learns how to present his design to blue-collar workers so that they really understand what has to be made in very simple terms. But vice versa, also blue-collar workers uh, need to have the skills to understand uh, uh, designs. So, so it's, it's a, the, 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 these cross-cutting skills, that I, I think this is one of the keys uh, to come to a, a better quality in uh, the construction sector. Thank you. And then um, next question. Is the skills gap differentiated between countries as it is between professions? Does training create better perspectives for professionals to move to other national markets? Uh, maybe I briefly start and then Peter, you can tell more details. So yes, um, we did an analysis uh, as, you, as you could hear. We, there were uh, seven um, national skills mapping exercises um, in the partner countries and uh, Yes, there are uh, different levels between uh, between um, countries as well, and especially also there are different professions uh, and uh, let's say degrees that you can have, and that's what we tried in this scheme. We rather talk about let's say work fields, so that the the task that has to be done in certain countries, uh, uh, an architect can do different things than in another country. So they have the the different skill set uh, as professionals. And uh, yes, uh, so the aim is of, the, of such a scheme is also to, to try to harmonize, although this is a national competence, of course, the educational system. Uh, and uh, yes, the future, we, don't, we didn't achieve any, like, uh, um, let's say, you, uh, so we, we don't have any uh, passport, let's say, that gives professionals um, that uh, based on this they can move uh, across borders, but that's the but that's the future, I believe, and also that's the that's the future aim of, of such a European scheme. Peter, if you would like to add anything. Well, I don't have the, so many things to add to that, uh, mm -hmm. except for the fact that we uh, try to come to a European uh, qualification scheme uh, within the prof track, but it's only a first step. Uh, I think this is one of the uh, 
main challenges and opportunities that we see in the uh, construction skills projects and, this, and I hope that uh, also the, 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 the new projects that will be initiated uh, uh, in, the, in the new uh, work program in the EE3 calls that they can contribute to that. But I think that uh, uh, training is, uh, is, is one of the only things that, that, that can uh, create um, a more leveled uh, playing field uh, for all these professions in Europe and, uh, to, uh, and also to move from other national markets. Thank you. Uh, Philip, uh, I don't know if you have any, any comment regarding this or we can continue. Um, no, no, I don't think so. I think mm -hmm. uh, okay. uh, not specifically. Okay, thank you. So last question, uh, uh, where can uh, one find out specifically about e-learning courses or apps that are available for builders, craftsmen or technicians in the construction sector, not just those funded by the EU? Um, maybe I'll uh, have a, uh, answer that. I think, uh, well, two, two uh, I can think of immediately. One is the builder portal that I mentioned earlier uh, with the section on skills. That is uh, that is uh, the best place to look in general for anything to do with energy efficiency in buildings, including skills, uh, is on the build up. Um, but there's also, of course, the ProfTrack repository that Peter mentioned earlier, uh, and that is a repository of, of training materials of, of all kinds. Um, um, maybe people, Peter wants to add something on that. Uh, yes, I can add something uh, on that. Um, uh, the question was, um, as I understood, uh, not just those funded by EU. Uh, I must admit that the repository uh, mainly uh, contains of material now from uh, that we found from EU projects, but uh, there is now the possibility that uh, also other material uh, from trainers exp and experts uh, can be uploaded to the repository. So uh, perhaps we can expect also uh, contributions from uh, other programs uh, than funded by EU. But the main uh, material in our repository for the moment uh, now is uh, uh, coming from uh, EU funded uh, project and I must say there are really many. And maybe I, I could just add as well the, the advantage of the EU funded projects is that they are uh, many of them uh, following the European qualification framework so they their uh, training that is recognized that is uh, that is accredited um, and then that is is kind of portable with the with the person who's trained, so there 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 is an added value there to having them uh, working along alongside each other and learning from each other with this build up skills initiative. Yes, and maybe our last comment, uh, and Philip, uh, correct me if I'm wrong, but uh, regarding the national level e-learning courses uh, or or uh, yeah digital apps. Uh, uh, I'm sure that in the national, in the national initiatives of build up skills that target build craftsmen, uh, that are available at national level. So, for example, this app that we developed for build up has a Dutch version for the build up skills where there are courses implemented already. It's a question maybe also on language skills. Yes, and there are many of these uh, types of training material in, in the, the different countries. So that I know that there's also an app, for example, in Spain with the, there's a program, uh, a project called Construye uh, for Spain, and it also had developed an app for, for blue collar workers on site. Um, uh, the, they would be, uh, the, you could be found on the build up portal. Yes, thank you very much. So I think then we can continue to our next session.